Welcome everyone to this video by Learn Civil Engineering where we will be working through an example problem calculating the magnitude of a hydrostatic load on a non-planar surface and finding the location of the point of action along with the direction that the load acts in. In the previous video we learnt the principles for achieving this so I'll leave the link to that video in the description and if at any point you don't understand the reason for why I'm doing something you can go and check it out to clear up your understanding. For this problem, we have a volume of liquid in the shape of a quadrant with a radius of L and which has a uniform width of W. The liquid is bound by the surface S and the free surface is open to the atmosphere. The coordinate directions X, Y and Z are defined as shown relative to the bottom corner of the volume of liquid with Z denoting the vertical height above the base of S. The liquid is applying a hydrostatic load from the point of action PA onto the surface which has a magnitude of F. With this information, calculate the horizontal component FH and the vertical component FV of the hydrostatic load applied to the surface S. And then find the magnitude of the resultant load, the location of the point of action and the direction the load acts. Finally, evaluate these quantities for the case where rho equals 1000 kilograms per meter cubed L equals 6 meters and W equals 10.5 meters. Before we work through the solution to this problem, you are welcome to pause the video here and attempt the question for yourself. Now that you've had a chance to answer this question, let's go through how to do it. Before we start any calculations, it is always a good idea to illustrate the problem in the easiest possible way to understand. We can visualize this scenario better with a diagram showing a side view of the surface in the yz plane. Note here that the water has a width of w into the page. We have been told that the volume of liquid forms a quadrant and has a radius of l, so we know that the vertical surface and free surface both have lengths of l. The hydrostatic load being applied to the surface, s, has a point of action located at p, a, and can be decomposed into a horizontal and vertical component denoted FH and FV respectively. For convenience, we will introduce the H coordinate direction, which is the depth below the free surface. And now we have a diagram that will help us more with solving the problem. To start off, we will project the surface S onto the horizontal and vertical surfaces, denoting these AH and AV respectively. As we know the length of these surfaces is equal to L, and the volume of liquid has a uniform width of W, we know that the area of the horizontal and vertical surfaces are equal, and therefore AH is equal to AV, and using the dimensions we have been given, these are equal to LW, and we will call this A for simplicity. The volume of the liquid is equal to one quarter of the area a circle with radius of L would make, times by the width of W. Therefore, the volume V is equal to 1 quarter times pi L squared W. And substituting our formula in for the area of the liquid, V is equal to 1 quarter pi L A. We can now use these to find the magnitudes of the horizontal and vertical components of F. Starting off with finding FH, FH is equal to the surface integral of the pressure relative to the H coordinate with respect to A. The liquid is homogeneous and static, so substituting in pressure distribution, P equals rho G H, we can factor rho G out of the integral such that F H is equal to rho G times the integral of H with respect to H from 0 to L times by the integral of 1 with respect to X from 0 to W. The integral of H with respect to H equals 1 half H squared and the integral of 1 with respect to X is equal to X. Therefore, we get rho g times by 1 half h squared with boundary limits of 0 and l times by x with boundary limits of 0 and w. Substituting in our boundary limits, we get rho g times 1 half l squared w, and as we saw earlier, the area of the vertical surface is equal to lw, so we can rewrite this expression as fh equals 1 half rho g la. And then the vertical component of the hydrostatic load, fv, is just equal to the weight of the liquid, so Fv equals rho Gv. And substituting in our formula for the volume of the liquid, 
FV is equal to 1 quarter pi rho g L A. To calculate the magnitude of the resultant load, we find the hypotenuse of the horizontal and vertical components using Pythagoras' theorem. So, the magnitude of the load, F, is equal to the square root of FH squared plus FV squared, which is equal to the square root of 1 half rho g L A all squared plus 1 quarter pi rho g L A all squared. Expanding out the brackets results in the square root of a quarter rho squared g squared l squared a squared plus 1 16th pi squared rho squared g squared l squared a squared. Taking a factor of a quarter rho squared g squared l squared a squared from both parts, we get the square root of 1 quarter rho squared g squared l squared a squared times by 1 plus pi squared over 4. And therefore, we get f is equal to 1 half rho g l a times the square root of 1 plus pi squared over 4. Now, finding the location of the point of action p a, we know using intuition that the x coordinate, x p, is equal to 1 half w. As the volume of liquid has a uniform width of w, it is located down the vertical centre line. For the y-coordinate, the point of action is located at the centroid of the cross-sectional area of the water, as this is the point that Fv acts from. It is known that the centroid of a quarter circle is located at 4 over 3 pi times the radius, and therefore, in this example, the y-coordinate of Pa is located at yp equals 4 over 3 pi times L. Finally, to find the z-coordinate of Pa, we use moments about the x-axis at the free surface. Doing this, and using the h-coordinate, we have the moment mx equals fh hp, and then using the hydrostatic pressure distribution, we have the moment mx is equal to the surface integral of p times h with respect to a. Combining these two equations, and substituting the pressure distribution of our liquid in, gives us hp fh, equals the surface integral of rho g h squared with respect to a. And as we've seen in previous videos, this can be written as rho g times the integral of h squared with respect to h from 0 to l times by the integral of 1 with respect to x from 0 to w. And this is equal to rho g times by 1 third h cubed with boundary limits of 0 and l times by x with boundary limits of 0 and w. Substituting in our boundary limits, we get rho g times 1 third l cubed times w, and then substituting in our equation for the area of the vertical surface, we get 1 third rho g l squared times a. We will factor 1 third l out of the expression and then rearrange for hp, so we get hp is equal to 1 third l times by rho g l a divided by fh, which equals 1 third l times rho g l a divided by one half rho g l a. We can see that rho g l and a are eliminated from the expression, and so we are left with one third l divided by a half, so h p equals two thirds l. We know that h is related to z by h equals l minus z, so therefore z p must equal l minus h p, which equals L minus two thirds L, and so ZP is equal to one third L. Therefore, we can write the location of the point of action of the load, XP, YP, ZP, equals one half W, four over three pi L, one third L. Now, moving on to the direction that the load acts in, this can be found using the equation theta equals the inverse tan of FV over FH where theta is the angle from the horizontal plane. Substituting in our values for fv and fh, we have the inverse tan of 1 quarter pi rho g l a over 1 half rho g l a, which simplifies to the inverse tan of 1 half pi, and so theta is equal to 1.00 radians, or 57.5 degrees. To summarise our answers for the first part of this question, the horizontal and vertical components of the hydrostatic load applied to the surface have magnitudes of FH equals 1 half rho g L A and FV equals 1 quarter pi rho g L A, 
resulting in a force of magnitude F equals one half rho G LA times the square root of one plus pi squared over four. And this load is being applied from the point XP, YP, ZP equals one half W four over three pi L one third L at an angle of theta equals 57.5 degrees from the horizontal plane. So to finish off the question then with the quantities specified at the start, where rho equals 1000 kilograms per meter cubed, L equals six meters and W equals 10.5 meters, F is equal to one half times 1000 times 9.81 times six squared times 10.5 times the square root of one plus pi squared over four, which equals 3,452 kilonewtons. XP equals one half times 10.5, which equals 5.25 meters. YP equals four over three pi times six, which equals 2.55 meters. And ZP equals one third times six, which equals two meters. And finally, we know that theta equals 57.5 degrees. So there we have seen how to calculate the magnitude of a hydrostatic load on a non-planar surface and find the location of the point of action along with the direction that the load acts in. This has been a video by Learn Civil Engineering. If you have found this video useful at all, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel to show your support. If you do have any remaining questions or would like me to cover a specific topic, please leave them in the comment section below and I will try to respond as soon as possible. Thank you for watching.